Jesus Malverde, the saint of the narcos, was a boy who was born in poverty to become a kind of Mexican Robin Hood at the beginning of the 20th century when he was assassinated. Shortly after his death, it is said that he began to perform miracles. But it wasn't until the 1970s that his story became more famous and he became the saint of the narcos. What do you think about the idea of a saint for narcos? Is it weird? Leave your comments and don't forget to subscribe, hit that notification bell, you know. The narco saint was supposedly born in Sinaloa around 1870. There is no birth record or official document that proves his existence, but Mexican oral tradition knows him by his given name of Jesus Juarez Maso. For this same reason, it's not exactly known where or when, but it is certain that he was born in a context of many shortages and poverty. This reality led him to work, at first in properties and estates of multimillionaires. Legend says that he was a victim of this situation of power, and his millionaire bosses punished him countless times and reproduced in him many abuses and injustices. On the other hand, the legend also tells that he was born into a family of low resources. After seeing his parents die of hunger and realizing the riches that the multi-millionaire hacienda owners possessed, he opted to steal their belongings and then share them with the most vulnerable sectors of the state of Sinaloa. Malverde suffered many injustices. He suffered a lot of hunger. The landowners mistreated him and they beat him. And that's why he began to steal, to give to those who were also starving. He stole it, he distributed it, he went house to house. Over time, this character won the affection of all those he helped. But at the same time, he became one of the most wanted criminals by the authorities. The story also tells that he earned the nickname Malverde because after committing his robberies, the bandit would hide among the green banana plantations of the region until he was out of sight of anyone who tried to capture him. In times of misery and oppression for the social classes forgotten by Porfirio Diaz, the figure of a bandit who stole from the rich and shared the riot with the poor peasants gained great credibility and spread throughout poems and songs until he was molded into a religious figure. There are other versions of Malverde's life before he became the Mexican Robin Hood. They also claim that before his life as an outlaw, he worked on the Ferrocarril Occidental de México and the Ferrocarril Sud Pacifico, a line that arrived in Culiacán from the north in 1905. The generous bandit committed so many robberies that the local governor, General Francisco Cañedo, a compadre of Porfirio Diaz, offered a reward for his capture. This reward was offered in 1909, and he was just captured on May 3rd of that year, the day on which the saint is remembered by his followers. There's no definitive version of the death of this Mexican Robin Hood. Some say that a companion betrayed him to collect the money offered by the government. But the most recognized version is that he was captured in a police chase and was shot and wounded. Aware that he couldn't survive, he managed to escape and asked a friend to turn him in. In this way, he would be the one to take the reward. Then he would distribute it to the poor. After being captured by the authorities, he was condemned to death. He was hung and his body was exposed for days before the entire town as an example of what would happen to anybody who followed in his footsteps. It seems that the army captured him and cut off the soles of his feet to execute him. Although the crude image of his decomposing body could have terrified anybody, it was in this context that Jesus Malverde is believed to have performed his first miracle. Legend says that a farmer lost his cattle and went to ask the generous bandit for help to get his cows back. If the farmer managed to find his animals, he promised to give his body a dignified burial. Soon after the promise was made, the cattle appeared. The peasant went to the place where Malverde was hanged, he took him down, and he fulfilled his promise to give him a dignified burial. This outlaw was given a holy burial in the neighborhood of La Redonda in Culiacan, the state of Sonora. After this miracle was performed, the fame of this man began to grow by word of mouth throughout Sinaloa, with humble people being his most faithful followers and witnesses of his miracles. It is believed that he is the saint of the narcos, but it's not exclusive to that group, since his fame grew after his murder, but mainly since the 70s. This character began to take on more importance in the 70s after Don Eligio Gonzalez received four gunshot wounds during an assault in Sierra. This gentleman worked moving people from the city to the highlands and offered service of transporting merchandise. It was in 1976 when Don Eligio was shot and hospitalized. After the situation, 
the man recalls that a lady had recommended him to pray to Malverde before each of these trips. It was in this way that Don Eligio made a promise to the generous bandit. If he recovered, he would help build him an altar so that people could pray and worship him. After his recovery in 1979, Don Eligio built the chapel with the help of the people in the city, and when he died in 2002, Jesus Gonzalez, his son, inherited the leadership of the Saint of the Narcos Convent. This martyr became important among traffickers when in the 70s a trafficker named Julio Escalante ordered the murder of his son because he was doing business without his consent. This young man was shot and thrown into the sea, but survived after praying to Jesus Malverde. The belief went beyond the La Redonda neighborhood and reached the ears of the traffickers. In fact, according to some local media, Cesar Ortiz, Edgar Tellez, and Rafael Caro, and even Joaquin El Chapo Guzman visited that chapel and knelt before the portraits and the figure of the martyr to ask for favors. Many indicate that Malverde may have performed a miracle or two for those capos who prayed in his chapel. The belief spread throughout the country, and people in Sonora and Sinaloa began praying to him and built the first chapels for Malverde. The popularity of his miracles reached other countries, and people from the United States and Colombia joined the list of believers. With prayers, offerings, and even corridos, Malverde's faithful entrust themselves to him to ask for security in difficult moments, success in their criminal businesses, and great riches. This mystique that was generated around Jesus Malverde by these traffickers also grew when a statue of the martyr appeared during a session of the trial against Chapo Guzman in the United States. Read right in a small room on top of a metal cabinet, before the entrance to the courtroom where the trial was being held, there was Malverde, who was also from Sinaloa, just like El Chapo. It is unknown how the figure, about 6 centimeters, 3 inches in size, was discovered by the press covering the trial against the alleged Sinaloa cartel kingpin in federal court in the Brooklyn borough. Nowadays, many stories are told about Jesus Malverde, to the point of turning him into a myth from which it is impossible to distinguish between what's real and what wasn't. And even his very existence is a debate that continues to this day. A cult has developed around the figure of Malverde that unites belief proper to popular Catholicism and others that the church considers superstitions. Since his sanctity has not been accepted by the Catholic Church, he is not normally called a saint, but rather an anima, that is, a soul. His figure has entered popular religiosity, along figures such as Saint Judes Darius and the Virgin of Guadalupe, the Sacred Heart or Santa Muerte, of which representations can also be found next to images of Malverde. In general, the cult is strongly related to the uses and the customs of Catholicism. Many ask for his intercession, and he's been attributed with various miracles, healings, and blessings, such as returning a lost cow to its owner or curing cancer. Malverde, like any other saint of Catholic influence, is attributed with the specialization in the types of miracles that he can perform, called invocations. The best known is the protection of people involved in trafficking. However, it's not the only one. Many times his followers prayed for him for the protection of migrants who cross irregularly to the United States, as well as for their relatives who remain in Mexico. There are shrines where figures of Malverde have been found among the most frequent border crossing routes. He is also known because he's asked for the protection of the poor when facing criminal cases, which is why in many areas of the country he's related to Saint Jude Tharius, patron saint of lost causes. Jesus Malverde has inspired numerous artistic manifestations of all kinds, which in turn have contributed to the expansion of the cult. This is especially concerning music. There are more than 56 songs in corridos dedicated to him. Several northern groups have dedicated corridos to him, such as the case of Cadetes de Linares, as well as in his movies. His most faithful followers are not only drug traffickers, but also poor families or bandits, who, before carrying out a large robbery, entrust themselves to him, since they know him as the angel of the poor. In Mexico, more and more of the faithful entrust themselves to him and have erected several altars in his honor. And you've reached the end. So what do you think about this popular saint? Did he exist, or was he just a myth that grew over the years? Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel.